Welcome back to Bridge 4. Today we're going to get back to Stannis Baratheon, the Winds of Winter videos that we began last June. This week is the first of two videos on Patchface, Stannis' Fool. Specifically, Patchface's prophecies, with a focus on one in particular. A little over 20 years before this scene here, where Sir Waymar Royce looked into the eyes of the White Walker and said, Dance with me then. The Mad King Aerys II Targaryen, who had not been quite so mad in those days, he sent Robert and Stannis' father, Stephen Baratheon, across the narrow sea to find a worthy bride for the king's son and heir to the Iron Throne, Prince Rhaegar Targaryen. Overseas, Lord Stephen Baratheon wrote back that he had found the most splendid fool, only a boy, yet nimble as a monkey and witty as a dozen courtiers. He juggles and riddles and does magic and he can sing prettily in four tongues. They bought his freedom and hoped to bring this fool back to Westeros. Young Robert would be delighted with him, and perhaps in time, Pat Chase would even be able to teach Stannis how to laugh. Unfortunately, there was a storm. Robert and Stannis, at about 16 and 14 years old respectively, they watched their parents' boat break up in Shipbreaker Bay within sight of their castle. The boat smashed against the rocks and was swallowed by the waters. A hundred oarsmen and sailors went down with Lord Stephen Baratheon and his lady wife. And for days thereafter, every tide left a fresh crop of swollen corpses on the strand below. On the third day, patches washed up. Alive. But different. Very different. Good old Maester Crescent thought that even for a fool, Patchface was a sorry thing. Cotter Pike claimed that Patchface was a simpleton, and Stannis claimed that Patchface was a half-wit jester. But joke's on them. As Patches once said, clever bird, clever man, clever fool. Whether he realized it or not, Patchface is a clever fool. More than once. His song, statements, and ramblings, they proved to be prophetic. Patchface once sang of marriage, and he prophesied both the Red Wedding and the Purple Wedding. Two huge events in A Song of Ice and Fire. Patches may have even sung in regards to False Arya's white wedding, or rather, the interesting feasts that occur afterwards. There's a chance that Patches prophesied Jon Snow's death right here, as well as Jon Snow's resurrection here. Some of these are still up for debate among fans, but it's pretty clear that at least two of these five are solid, the Red Wedding and the Purple Wedding. That tells us that Patchface's ramblings can be prophetic. Which brings us to the topic of this video. Patchface's Ice Dragon. The very first time that we heard Patches say anything, he said that birds have scales for feathers, which is possibly a nod to dragons, especially if you take into account the context of the conversation. And Patches' most common phrase may also allude to dragons. The shadows come to dance, my lord. Dance, my lord. Dance, my lord. You could argue that the shadows dancing refers to White Walkers fighting, such as against Sir Waymar, or it may refer to Stannis' two shadow babies, the first which killed Renly and the second which killed Sir Courtney Penrose. But the most direct reference to shadows dancing, it occurred here, inside the tent, as the dragon eggs were accidentally given life as part of Miri Mazdor's blood magic spell. You must go also, lady. Once I begin to sing, no one must enter the tent. The dead will dance here tonight. The witch, she can bring baby. I hear her say so. The shadows come to dance, my lord. Dance, my lord. Dance, my lord. So we've got several possible references to dragons, and here's the big one. Under the sea, smoke rises and bubbles, and flames burn green and blue and black. In the past, fans have speculated that this refers to the Battle of Blackwater, wildfire burning green among the blue of the water and the dark of night, or black water. But water and night are not flames, so that never really made sense to me. Other fans speculated that the flames were a metaphor for figurative dragons, or people with Valyrian blood, such as Danny, Fagon Aegon, and Jon Snow. This interpretation is pretty badass. It's a play in the blacks and the greens of the Dance of the Dragons, a Targaryen family civil war about 150 years prior to the events of this story. And in this scenario, Jon Snow would be represented as blue for Lyanna, 
a blue rose of Winterfell. I love that. Pretty nerdy, very intelligent, very cool. But I'm not sold. Patches said flames burning green and blue and black. Those figurative flames represent Danny's three dragons. Sort of. Rhaegal Viserion and Drogon's eggs were green, cream, and black respectively. Their flames are orange and yellow, shot through with veins of green, pale gold, shot through with red and orange, and black, shot with red. And their scales were green and bronze, cream and gold, and black and scarlet respectively. So Rhaegal and Drogon align with the green and the black flames of Patch's song, which leaves Viserion as blue? Yep, the best color, blue. Of course, hindsight's 2020, right? That's why this line jumped out at me for the first time just last week. Patches was very likely prophesying the fall of Viserion and the rise of the Ice Dragon, something that my friends Tone of Teflon TV and JD, they both foresaw this many years ago, so hats off to them. Just as in Season 7 of Game of Thrones, the Army of the Dead will likely cross the wall at East Watch by the Sea since Queen Selyse Baratheon stated as much, suggesting that it's been seen in the flames. But let's take a step back. If George R. R. Martin has planned all along to introduce an ice dragon, will there be a dragon rider? And if so, who? Some random white walker? Will the white walkers draw straws to see who gets the honor? Because there is no Night King in the books, at least not yet. If you're new here, hit subscribe. Next Thursday, we're going to finally share the clues from the books that there will be a Night King in the Winds of Winter. Catch you on the flip side.